Hey everyone, today I'd like to share this somewhat dark visual, but I think it's really cool. We basically take an AI generated face and we turn it into particles and we displace it a lot and we get really intense results by doing this. And the first thing we're going to be building today will be this depth slider. This will teach you a lot about particle instancing and how we take data from an image and convert it into particle uh, positions. Then we'll make this displace pre and we'll make these crazy lines. And the rest of the parameters will be in a separate tutorial on my Patreon. Thanks a lot for everyone that's already there. I hope you join me there. It really supports me a lot as Touch Designer is quite a niche subject and I will never get crazy amounts of views on YouTube to support this full time and joining my Patreon will. So thanks a lot for considering and we will make something crazy today. Enjoy. We will start by making a grid of points. So look for a ramp top, set the resolution to 500 by 500 and set the pixel format to the 32-bit float RGBA. Then press Alt-N to get a null or just uh, look up a null. And we're going to call this translate OP operator. Now uh, let's look for an add sub and add point on, then add in a convert and convert this to particle per point. Then from this convert, drag this, hold this and press tab and go to uh, here and look for the geometry. I go to the instancing tab, turn instancing on and drag the translate OP on the translate OP and now fill in R and G and B. What this does, if you've never used instancing, for each pixel um, this uh, image has, uh, it will draw a point or anything. You can also use cubes or whatever you want. We're using points now. So for each, pic each pixel, it's drawing a point at the location of RGB and RGB corresponds to X, Y, Z. So R is X, G is Y and B is C. And currently we have a ramp going from zero to one for where each pixel is this has the same value because it's not colored, it's just white. So it goes from zero to one. So we can see in our geometry, we have a line that's going diagonally from zero to one because it's gone from zero to one X, from zero to one Y and zero to one Z. So it's going to from zero to one, but we want a grid of points. So we're going to uh, need to do something. Um, we can insert a reorder and this lets us um, put in uh, different inputs for the RGB components. So we want this to be ramp X. So for the red channel, this will be ramp Y. So we're going to feed this in here and choose input two. Uh, and it should take the green channel. It doesn't really matter because the RGB channels in these ones are the same. Um, and now oh, we need to make this vertical. And now we have uh, a plane, but this is still not exactly what we want because the third parameter is also putting something out. So we're going to set this to zero for now. And now we have a grid of points, but we have a lot of points. Uh, that's okay for now. Um, we're going to, as you can see, currently it's set from zero to one and that's okay, but I want to center it at zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it to go from minus one to one in both, uh, uh, directions. So we're going to add in a math here, math and go to range and set the range, to, uh, minus one to one, copy this and connect it up here. And now you can see it's, uh, that we have, uh, oh, whoops. Um, currently it cannot go negative uh, on one axis because we didn't set this to 32-bit floats and uh, the 8-bit fixed cannot go negative. So now that's fixed. Uh, now we have a grid of points. That's lovely. Uh, and now we want to give these points a color. So I've copied in this image. This was made using Bing AI 
and just a prompt of an angry eyed man you can make something yourself it's free i will link to bing ai uh, in the description you can take any image you want it doesn't really matter um, we will connect a fit to the image you chose um, and we will set this to 500 by 500 uh, to make it oh whoops i need to change this to 500 by 500 uh, yeah that's correct and now connect a level to this fit and give it some contrast we're going to set the contrast to five to make it a bit more uh, intense and then again press alt n and call this color op um, now on the geometry we're going to the second tab of instancing and going to drag this color op on here and r g b and now we got our image for each point because uh, now currently it looks at uh, a point here in the translate op and takes the r g and b uh, or the r and g values to uh, position position it in a grid and then it takes it looks at the corresponding pixel and sees what color it has so this gives the color to our uh, correct pixels now we can render this uh, by taking a camera and a constant material to make it uh, white or make give it uh, some light. Um, then we can choose a render, change the resolution of the render to 1280 by 400 um, and then go to the camera and zoom this in a bit and let's oh whoops make sure the eyes are centered um yeah like this and then add in rgb key and then press mm -hmm. alt n and this is the end of our network we can display this now we're going to make a quick feedback loop so insert a null here uh, right click on the background and collapse selected call this feedback loop and go in here delete this drag a feedback out a transform a level and a composite change this composite to add drag it onto the feedback look for a keyboard in uh, whoops keyboard in drag this onto the reset of the feedback close this now we can reset our feedback uh, transform set the scale to 1.008 set the level uh, set the brightness a bit down let's do 0 0.9 maybe a bit less 0 0.85 yeah that's great uh, and now insert another level here uh, and set the contrast to 1.17 now we can go out and we have our feedback loop okay so right click here and insert a bloom set the pre-black level to 0 0.77 and set the bloom intensity to 0 0.82 uh, and now we're going to give, the, give this some depth as you can see it's still a flat image we want to change this and we're going to use the third input of the reorder, aka the blue channel or the uh, the X channel. So this or the Z uh, translate. Um, so we're going to take a select, and we're going to select the color op, and then insert a math. And let's see. Whoops! It automatically connected because I had it already connected. But um, connect this up and set the range to um, zero and now in the reorder change output blue to input three blue and now with this uh, parameter we can change the amount of depth so we can pull it out like this which is really quite cool uh, so we're gonna leave this a bit here uh, now we can go uh, and select this entire network and right click on the background collapse selected call it uh, angry uh, eyes now right click customize components and 
click add page now you will get custom a custom page and we are going to add depth uh, make sure this is set to float and now we have a depth parameter and uh, we can open that go back in here and connect this depth to here and now you can change the depth with this slider Okay, on to the cool stuff. We're going to displace this uh, color or this uh, image, uh, giving it a displaced look, the lines you saw earlier in the video. So we're gonna look for a noise and we're going to set this resolution to one by 50. This is the amount of lines uh, we're going to get. So we're going to uh, set the period to zero and the amplitude to 1.09 then uh, let's transform translate this a bit by abs time dot seconds divided by 10 and that's about right and then go to common and choose nearest pixel you see if we have this set to in interpolate pixels it will be smooth but we need hard pixels great um now we're going to put this into a fit and set the resolution to 500 by 500 also nearest pixel and now fill and now we have these lines uh, we're going to make this not monochrome and if we insert a displace up here and use this fit uh, to displace it we get really cool stuff and we can I think I only want this axis. Yeah, so we can change the uh, displacement by changing this uh, parameter. So we're again, we're going out, uh, right click, customize component and displace. Or I call this displace pre, but displace is fine for now. Right click and open these parameters, go back in and drag this displace onto the displace weight and now we can um, change this with uh, this slider however um, this is currently a bit sensitive so if you want a bit displacement you have to be really fine here we can use a trick um, using math and we're going to uh, do this to the power of three and this gives us an exponential curve so it goes really slow and then really fast. So uh, we have a lot of control in the beginning. And then at the end, we have little control, but then it goes fast anyway. Now um, we want to change this seed because we get cool stuff. If the ch seed changes, then it starts flickering. Uh, we're going to insert an LFO. And we're going to set this to pulse and we're going to connect a count. And then this count every time we have a pulse increases. And if we drag this onto the seat, every time it pulses, uh, the seat changes. And now if we increase this uh, frequency, it will go faster and do crazy stuff. So now we can increase this and we get these insane lines and we also can increase the depth and we get this cool stuff and we can also play around with our feedback and maybe increase the level a bit uh, to 95 and then it will be become like uh, more white the first thing we're going to do in the patreon tutorial will be these square uh, displacements and i think this is really cool because you can still see the eyes and you don't really have a clue what it is but you can see somehow can see a face and especially if you give this some more feedback uh, it becomes really cool so i hope you'd consider uh, joining the already 50 people uh, on my patreon and follow this tutorial there's also more i occasionally vj at festivals and i also make tutorials about uh, the visuals i use there and i plan to um, go a bit more deep about uh, how I VJ. So if you're interested in that, also check out my Patreon. Please let me know what you think about this kind of content. It was a bit more complicated than usual, but I think it was really worth it because the end result is really cool. I think I'll see you next time or on my Patreon. Bye-bye.